where we will talk about writing policy briefs here uh, and about some tips some some practical issues and of course i would like you to intervene if you have any question and then we will um have a discussion if you have any questions and reflections about the uh, issues that we that, that I will show you na right now here. Um, so I don't know if uh, any one of you has ever uh, written a policy brief. Have you ever tried a policy brief? No, 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 I can see, yes. I can see one uh, one answer here, yes, not yet. Okay, so, uh, well, maybe this will be useful for you. Uh, and you'll find uh, everything here uh, really interesting. Uh, let me just, it's a little bit, we have uh, some kind of problems I have here. I don't know if you can see. It uh, doesn't switch the... Well, now? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, uh, first of all, we will see uh, the basic characteristics of, uh, of a policy brief. So, uh, a policy brief is not like the paper uh, that we we will write five or seven or eight or 10,000 uh, words. Here we will write like um, a text from 700, let's say, to uh, 3,000 words. So it's a little bit um, shorter, well, well, actually quite shorter than uh, the paper. So you may think that this will be easier because you have to write uh, a few things than if you have to write uh, 10,000 words. But sometimes this is not so easy. Uh, and it's not so easy because um, to write everything and to propose um, your recommendations in a specific policy, and uh, which will be based on the literature and on everything uh, in, in, a, in a small text, maybe sometimes will be difficult. So you need to, to follow some uh, guidelines in order to achieve your goal. First of all, um, in a policy brief, you should uh, present some of the main characteristics of the main outcomes and proposals and the recommendations of a specific policy. This could be used from uh, policy makers or uh, from scientists in specific and for specific topics. For example, you can see here from uh, the HAPS policy briefs, some of the topics that we have uh, uh, published some policy briefs about the gas price inefficiencies and uh, an obstacle uh, in the EU inflation, uh, again about the war uh, and the EU energy policy, um, and about issues such as the Europa Mobile, which, is, uh, which are connected with uh, education. So you can see that there are topics of interests, of different interests. Uh, we have two types of policy briefs, the objectives and the advocacy. In the objectives, you should present um, the potential available policies uh, in a way that you won't support actually in the beginning any of them but you should uh, try to present what are the availabilities in terms of policy uh, here the main aim is to explore the literature and to show to the policy makers which are the possibilities they have so it's you won't have here a a clear subjective recommendation. In the advocacy briefs, you present a specific implemented policy and specific solutions that you support, and you're not support them just generally. Uh, 
every recommendation is based on data, is based on literature, it's based on, uh, on facts. So because we are talking about a scientific text, you want to say something which is not connected with data, which is not connected with uh, literature. So uh, be careful on that. It's not like uh, a position paper in a, in, in, in a newspaper, a, a text in a newspaper. It's not that. Here you have to deal with an issue and whatever you say should be justified, even if you support a specific policy and a specific direction in this policy. So you, you uh, create a, an advocacy brief. So in the objective brief, uh, you have the ethical obligation uh, to present the potential policies, but you present them unbiased, in an unbiased way. Uh, again, you could lead your paper to some selection of policies, uh, which maybe have more positives, but again, uh, you show them unbiased and based on the literature and based on the data and the advocacy briefs, you present all the facts and recognize the potential limitations or the obstacles concerning the recommended policies. This is also very, very important, but again, you should justify everything you say, everything you support. So when you are in the platform of a journal, you see that there are some guidelines, maybe just a, a, a guidelines, specific guidelines of a, a topic, uh, of, for uh, creating a policy brief or a paper generally. Uh, and maybe you will have there uh, a template that you could use. This is a template which is created by the institution, by the editors, and um, you could use it. It is, will help you to create a proper policy brief. So uh, actually to edit it properly. Uh, so before you send it to the editors, you should be very careful to follow all the directions, all the, all the guidelines that are given to you from the editors. Uh, well, a lot of policy briefs uh, came to us for the HAPS policy briefs, which didn't follow the, the guidelines that we have. And also we have a template. I'll show you also the template. Uh, so, and then we had to, um, uh, send it back and propose uh, some uh, corrections and to follow the guidelines. So if you do this from the beginning, you save time. And you save time and uh, it's easier for you to uh, uh, create the final draft and for the paper to be published. It is important that you use simple language, that your language is well uh, structured, and you don't use so long sentences. Please don't create sentences like half a page sentence or a paragraph, uh, one sentence. No, this is not correct. It, it, it um, creates mistakes, uh, it makes mistakes, and then it's not also clear for the reader and for the reviewer. So your sentences should be clear and proper uh, you can use terminology, specific terminology of the topic that you you um, you are studying, but but the sentences and the structure should be clear. And of course, you should refrain from using first person. I want to write this policy brief because no, this is not this is not something. This is a letter. This is not uh, a policy brief. This is not a scientific text. So you should use third person. Uh, okay, you will declare the aim, but you should use third, third person. Uh, in most of the platforms, most of the, of the journals, you will have directions, specific direction and guidelines and templates. If you don't, normally they use uh the, this uh, a4 page with normal margins uh, times new roman uh, size 12 uh fully justified and one half and a half life spacing but you should go to the guidelines and to see if they want 
this format or something uh, different. So here you can see the template that we use in the HAPS policy briefs that we have. So every author should go there and uh, create the um, uh, policy brief according to this uh, template. So maybe you will find a template in a, in a journal that accepts policy briefs, or maybe you don't, or you have the, the guidelines, you should follow them um, and create your uh, policy brief. So before you start writing, you should uh, have clear in your mind the problem, the issue that you want to study. Not something complex, but the question, which is the question, why I'm writing this, what I want to achieve, what I want to say, why this is important, what I do, do I want to highlight. So you should have these clear in your mind or write them down in a paper, but you have uh, to be clear on that before start writing. Then you will look for uh, literature and specific source sources. You will study them and you will re reflect on the topic. You could find books, scientific articles, um, reports from organizations, databases from Eurostat, OECD, ILO, um, World Health Organization. But always you do it clearly. You, 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 will have, you should have in your mind what is the question the main research question. And as a tip, when you are studying something, then write notes. And also, uh, if you write notes, write down notes, just keep also the re resources, the references. Where did you find this? Where did you find that? Because then when you start to write the, the text, you will have all the resources, everything, written down in uh, uh, written down and you can use it because if you don't do that then you will be lost or it will take you more time to find uh, where did you find this or that which is these references um, in which uh, textbook report you found you find them so this is important and maybe it seems simple to you it's not. Uh, every student or every author does this mistake. Uh, so also, you could collect literature databases using keywords. For example, if you find if you if you are looking for something in in uh, in Google Scholar, you put there the um, uh, specific uh, keyword and you could find it or a PubMed or whatever in which database, uh, in every database you, you use. Um, it is accepted. If you find um, something, a source, something, uh, a text, an article from uh, these uh, databases, which is two decades ago, it, it is accepted. Okay, generally, it's not the problem, uh, but you should try to find literature which is recent most recent don't write the text uh, and all your uh, literature everything there is from uh, 1980s and 1990s except if you write something which is historical but but if you write for something for a policy which is implemented now there then there is a problem. You could refer to things that have been written or implemented decades ago, but you should try to find recent literature. Um, so what you should try to find, which aspects of the problem has been exhausted? Which are the different opinions? Uh, what is going on in the academic debate? And if there is a gap in the literature that you want to cover or you want to cover part of it or you want to describe why there is this gap and if there is a necessity for further research uh, or whatever um, so then you could create the first outline of the policy brief the first uh, draft it is also important 
to divide your paper into subsections. Then it's easier for you to, first of all, to target the research, what you find, what you uh, try to find and find the, the uh, relevant uh, literature. Um, so then the, beginning with the introduction, just uh, uh, allow me to, to say something. The first thing in the um, paper, in the policy brief in every paper is the abstract. I'll uh, say about that in, uh, when, when, when I will finish the main part of the paper. Also the introduction is the first, uh, the first part, but you should write it after you have finished the main analysis and the conclusions. Because in the introduction, you should include um, what you did in the analysis, what you have found, uh, and uh, what you have proposed in the recommendations, what are the conclusions, uh, briefly, but you should state it. So uh, as a tip, you should write the introduction when you have completed your paper, your first draft, let's say, of the paper, uh, not in the beginning. But I will start for, uh, to say a few words about the introduction. It is the most important part. Why? Because you introduce the reader and the reviewer actually to the, to the specific topic that you want to um, analyze. And it should be concise and engaging. It should attract the reader. Why should I read this paper? And why should I accept this paper to be published? So let me just... Um, read what this author has done. So if you don't attract, if you don't engage, uh, if you don't give to the reviewer the necessary information in the introduction, then uh, it doesn't go, it, it wouldn't go uh, so, so well. Uh, so in the first few sentences, you should clarify what exactly you are doing in this paper. And it is, it is important to clarify this and to be clear on that. You should, summarize, you should make a summary uh, of, of the, the, the most important part of the literature that you have used and what you try to highlight there. Um, and of course, you will present in a few, in a two, three sentences. Uh, your solutions, your conclusions, your recommendations. So all of these are very important to be stated in the in the introduction. Let's see how this could could uh, go. You begin with a general statement that introduces the general topic of the paper and also the 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 background of the arguments that you will follow. Then you should give definitions and technical informations about the issue, about the specific issue that you will analyze. So uh, what exactly you do that? What, I what is that? Maybe the reader uh, don't know what exactly you're discussing here. And of course, a, th a thesis statement, which introduces the key elements of your argument. So there, if you try to bridge the gap in the literature, you identify this, uh, what are you doing there? And also you will inform the reader what uh, to expect to see in the rest of the policy brief. In the first part, uh, you will see that, you will see that in the second part, and then uh, where we are going to the conclusions when you, we, we uh, reach to this, to that conclusions. Uh, then we're going to the research overview. So this is a summary of the key findings that are uh, specifically relevant to the policy issue that is, is analyzed. So this section includes the brief review of the literature, the research methods, because you may have used specific research methods. So you should declare them and the main findings and conclusions of the research, not the general conclusions. Um, it, it is important here also to be concise and clear because you don't have uh, much space to write all of this uh, stuff. So you need to be 
clear and concise to, to include all the necessary information in a limited space. You know, this is a skill. So you should do that uh, appro uh, appropriately. And of course, you introduce the research question or the problem in the beginning, and then you provide a brief overview of the methods, and then you summarize the key findings and the conclusions of the research. So here, it is important that all of these are connected, of course. All of these are connected and are connected with your question, with your main question. In the discussion and the analysis of the findings, you go to the in-depth analysis of the research findings and the implications for the policy issue uh, that you study. And then you explain the findings. You explain what, which is exactly the importance of these findings. Um, and these findings should be related with the policy recommendations or the proposals afterwards. So here you, you begin with a summary of the research findings, and then you provide evidence to support these findings with uh, data or whatever. Um, then you analyze them and uh, you show the main important uh, things. Of course, don't forget that if there are limitations, you should declare the limitations or the strengths. Here, it is important to be subjective and uh, present both sides of the argument, if relevant, different arguments. So you should present positive, negative, uh, whatever the basic characteristics of the different arguments. And uh, these will help you to go to the next steps, uh, which is the recommendations and then the conclusions. Uh, so again, you should use clear and accessible language. And uh, of course, link the findings with the issue that you study. Uh, so you should explain how the findings support the challenge um, or challenge the existing policies or the practices and be specific in the recommendations. Here, the recommendations should be very, very well connected with the literature, and with the analysis, with your findings, because you are doing these recommendations as an expert and you give these recommendations to the policy makers and of course to the broader academic community, but especially to the policy makers. So this should be well uh, connected with your analysis and uh, you will start by restating the basic purpose of the policy brief, summarizing the key findings, and then connect the analysis with your recommendations, which should be well structured structured, and empirically, empirically justified with data, with the literature, but with examples and justified. You won't make any general recommendations which are not justified and they, they are not connected with data, with uh, the analysis, with the evidence. So don't be oversimplistic and unrealistic here. You know, um, the basic, one of the basic characteristics uh, of populism is oversimplification. So we are not here uh, populists, we are not here uh, whatever, supporting something uh, based on uh, ideology, whatever. Here we are uh, scientists and we are trying not to be oversimplistic, but based our recommendations on specific evidence and on the literature. And this could be connected also with the ideology, but be careful, everything should be justified. So no oversimplification here in the recommendations. Um, and also you should consider the political context of these recommendations. Maybe there are budget constraints and you propose um, to, to um, increase public funding. How you do that? You, you, you could do that, you could propose that, but you should uh, adjust your analysis, your recommendations to the specific 
situation there or to the specific scenario you support, policy scenario or the policy scenario which would be uh, in, in, uh, in effect. So, or the different policy scenarios. So maybe here you should be specific and write down the policy scenarios and what are the different policies that should be implemented, adjusted to each scenario. So this is a realistic analysis, you know, and also this could provide guidance to the policy makers and overcome any, any potential barriers um, on, on their implement, implementation. Of course, you uh, should um, summarize the recommendation in the end and highlight the potential impact of this issue. Uh, of course, you should be persuasive. Uh, your argument should be persuasive and should be clear and accessible in terms of language. Okay, it should be understandable. Then you go to conclusions. There you summarize the main findings, the main recommendations, and reiterate their importance. Uh, again, it, the, the, this part should be clear because you don't have enough space here. And um, start again with the purpose of the policy brief, then uh, provide a compelling, ar compelling argument and with the main characteristics, you acknowledge the limitations and the uncertainties and you close uh, the brief with a call to action. For example, what exactly should be done uh, for the policymakers? And if there is a necessity or you find that there is a necessity for further research, you state that, you declare that there is a necessity. And you have found, you have found that. Um, going back to the beginning, the abstract is the most important thing. Why is that? You know that uh, this is the summary. When you are, when, when when another scholar will find your paper, your brief, and making his or her uh, own research, want to cite your paper or to use your paper. The abstract is the main part that we, uh, the, the, the scholar will, will read and decide based on the abstract if it is appropriate for including them in, their, in, in his or her citations or not. So, and also the policymaker will uh, read the uh, abstract and say, oh, this is okay, or no, this uh, will not give to me any information, any guidance. So the abstract is very, very, very important. It's short, maybe 100 to 250 words or to 300 words, but it should have a specific structure and all the necessary information in such uh, a space, in such uh, a limited space. So here you, you should provide a concise and accurate summary of the main points, of the main findings, and of the recommendation of the documents. Of the documents. The abstract is in the beginning, as we said, and you should be very clear here. You summarize your recommendations. Here you provide uh, some context uh, uh, of the policy uh, uh, brief, you explain which is the problem or the issue uh, that uh, you address, you clearly state in one or two sentences the uh, objectives and the goals of the paper, the methodology that you have used, you summarize the key, the key only findings, the key recommendations that you have done and any implications that may exist. In the, the way that the, the uh, abstract uh, um, should be, maybe is um, in, has specific guidelines in the journal, given from the journal. Here is an abstract which is uh, structured. You see the background, methods, results, uh, limitations, conclusions uh, with subsections. Here, the journal uh, says that it should be like that. But again, it has the main part, which is the summary of uh, your paper. Maybe 
the journal don't use this uh, uh, structure with subsections, but want a, a summary like that, which is one text with no subsections. Again, you should include the basic parts, which is actually all of them. One, two sentences for every, for each and every of them. So, and of course the keywords, but it's important to include all the parts. So you have to bear in mind that your policy brief deals with a topic that it is related with other topics. It is interrelated. So you have to include in your analysis the connections that has with other policies. Of course, you cannot go to in-depth analysis of the connections, but you should bear in mind that it is interrelated and interconnected with many, many other issues. So you should also um, declare that there is a, in, an interconnection here. Um, so of course, when you write, maybe uh, in, in the process, you may um, change your argument or you may make some changes uh, that um, the previous text is not appropriate anymore and you write it down uh, another text. Uh, don't uh, discard your texts that you're not uh, using. Maybe they are useful in the future. And of course, your literature, uh, which maybe is not appropriate or you don't use it, just have a backup and you don't know when it will be useful for you. Uh, of course, I. I said about that, you should have subsections and chapters. This is very, very important. They are necessary because uh, the reader can have a clear picture of what is your arg argument. And of course, it is easier for you to find more literature if you have well-structured uh, a paper, a well-structured paper. So again, any titles you use should be connected with the topic because we have seen several uh, briefs uh, which have a title and it's not connected with the, um, the subsection. So you should connect them appropriately. Then uh, if you do subsections, which is important, uh, you provide evidence and carry out the analysis for every subsection and you present any count, uh, counter arguments. And of course, remember that from the analysis, we are going to synthesis. So your text should be narrowed down, but without losing the meaning of the analysis we are doing, because you don't have unlimited space here for the policy brief. So for every subsection in the beginning, you should write some sentences that summarize the main arguments and then uh, you could remove them, but this will help you with what, have in mind what you have to do in the next step, writing the subsection. Each paragraph should start with the main idea that presents the essence of the paragraph. So this is followed by sentences presenting evidence and uh, the analysis. Then you proceed to the evaluation. So you have to have in your mind that each paragraph is similar to a chapter, to a section, but in the micro level. Again, uh, remember the sentences should, should be clear uh, with, with uh, checking uh, your syntax and not very, very long. So. Uh, as a tip, you could create an outline and follow this outline. Uh, this will help you uh, writing uh, your paper. Now, citations. This is a very important part. Well, when you are um, writing an academic text, you should use citations. It's not like I'm writing a text for a newspaper. This is an academic text. So you should cite your references. You demonstrate in that way that you have delved deeper into the study 
and of course you strengthen your working hypothesis. This lends credibility to your work. And of course, the reader, the examiner, the reviewer, check your arguments and uh, make targeted suggestions and improvements. If you are not citing the sources you use, this in academia is a serious offense. This is what we're talking about, plagiarism. This is a serious offense. And this does not mean that just you are copying phrases from another author, but also this includes paraphrasing ideas in your own work and don't cite uh, the primary source. You should cite any uh, source you have used. How you do that? Well, there are different styles. In the social sciences, most commonly we use the APA reference style, but you can use any, any other you want. Is They are all accepted. Of course, you should go to the guidelines of the, of the journal to see which they accept. So, and you cannot use in the same paper different styles. So you, you should use one of them. Uh, maybe some, things, some, some of these things are uh, simple, but we have seen people get confused. So that's why we are, we are talking about that. Uh, so there are two ways for a researcher, for a scholar, for an author, um, uh, that, that uh, he or uh, she can use uh, the work of others by paraphrasing and by quoting. Paraphrasing is most common, is most common and there you present someone else's idea or opinion in your own words. There you should cite the original source. Sometimes you may use specific phrases in order to show uh, their importance. For example, then you put these phrases in quotation marks and the text, uh, which is from the original text in italics, and you uh, add the reference with the specific page, declaring the specific page that you have found this um, text. So how we do that? So it's not enough just to put in the end of the paper uh, the list of references. These are always connected with the references that we use in the text. So in the text, we can use these uh, narrative and parenthetical uh, uh, citations. For example, uh, the first one is Kohler noted, 2016 is the year of publication of his book or his um, paper. Also, you can use, uh, you can write down his, for example, idea, and then you put, uh, the citation in a parenthesis. But if you take the specific text that he uh, has written, then you can do it with these two ways, declaring the page. You see 2000 Epstein, 2005, uh, and then uh, the number three is the page of this uh, text. So you should declare which is exactly the page that you have, find, you have found this text. And also this goes in uh, quotation marks. Um, so here, um, maybe sometimes you don't know the author. There is a report, for example, from Eurostat or from the European Commission that doesn't have a, a, an author. So there you just say, uh, uh, the, the, the name of the institution, for example, World Health Organization or OECD or European Commission and the year of publication. Maybe sometimes you may find uh, that there is no date, no year of publication. So there you say ND, no date. So this is okay if you put it. In, in specifically in some uh, websites that you may uh, use, you may find 
that some papers or some texts from institutions do not use uh, the date. But in most of them, you will find the, the, the year of publication. So just be careful to use it like that if uh, there are any uh, such problems. So maybe you use from the same author publications that he has done the same year. For example, Smith in 2010. How you separate them with A or B in the text, A or B, A, B, the, the first and the second publication of the same year. And then you write the title in the list of references in the end of the paper, the title of the first, the title of the second, and inside the text, you just write A or B. Then uh, the reader or the reviewer knows that A is that one, B is that one. So you separate it like that. If you have uh, the same year, more than one publication from the same author. Now, uh, sometimes we find something that is written in a book, but uh, it says that someone else in the past has uh, said that. If you go and find the original text, okay, you, it's okay, you find it, you cite the original text. But if you could not find that, what do you do? For example, you go to Smith 2015 and you, you, you find that Jones in 1967 uh, said that. Then you cannot find Jones. What you write? You write that Jones, as cited in Smith, argues that. And the list of references, you cite only Smith. Why? Because you didn't uh, uh, find Jones. And you declare that what you found that Jones said, you found it in Smith, because maybe Smith hasn't uh, interpre interpreted well what Jones said. So you are safe by saying that I have found what Jones said in Smith. And it's that. If you found the original, if you find the original book of Jones, that's okay. You cite Jones. But if you don't, then you cite Smith. This is an example that we will, uh, you will encounter uh, the, the, this issue if you write uh, academic texts. Um, so when we have two authors, we write down uh, the, the, the names of the two authors, for example, Davis and Smith in 2017. If we have more, then we write it like uh, in the example of Mitchell et al. 2018. In the list of references, we write all the names of the authors. But in the text, in the references in the text, we just write the first one if there are more than two, uh, and then et al. If there are two, like that, Davis and Smith. Here is an example of the list of references of a journal article. We have to uh, be careful because the different, again, the different guidelines in different uh, journals uh, maybe have some small differences, but the main way is that, uh, that I show you here. Um, if there is a journal article in the list of, of references, you should write the last name, the first initial, the year of publication, then the title of the article, then the title of the journal in italics, the volume, the issue in parentheses uh, number, if it exists, and the pages, and then the DOI. So this is the way that we cite journal articles. Remember here in italics, we put the uh, title of the journal, not the title of the uh, of the paper, but in a book, in italics, we put uh, the title of the book. Yes, we will share the presentation, uh, Anna. Yes, we'll share the presentation with all the details. Don't worry about that. Um, so, in 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 for a book. We should put in italics the uh, title of the book. 
the last name, the first initial, the year of publication, then in italics, the title of the book, then where the book is published, here, London, for example, and then the publisher. Don't um, forget to write also the, um, the place of publication when it is for a book. Maybe you have a chapter in a collective volume, then the last name and the first initial of the author of the chapter, be careful, of the chapter, then the year of the publication of the collective volume, then the title of the chapter, then you put in the editors of the collective volume, then in italics, uh, the title of the collective volume, then the pages of the chapter, and then uh, the publisher. And also here, the the uh, before the publisher, you can put the uh, the place, London, for example, whatever. Then you will have maybe news article in a news website this is the way again last name first initial year and month and uh, uh, the day of the um of the article the title of the article the title of the website of or, or of the um newspaper new york times for example in italics and then the url uh, don't forget here uh, most of the journals will say that after the URL, you, you should put the date of accession, of last accession. So the date that you access this link. So don't forget to use that or to see, to check if they uh, want the date uh, of accessing the last uh, accession of the website. Be careful with the websites. Uh, use only um, scientifically proven sources, not everything. Don't go to blogs, for example, to whatever blogs. Just use uh, websites from institutions, from maybe uh, some accepted uh, news websites um, or some reports of different institutions uh, and, of course, of scientific uh, papers uh, or publications in the uh, Google Scholar. Just be careful on that. In policy briefs, you could use graphs and charts, photos, infographics, tables, whatever. You could use that. You don't have enough space, but you could use these, uh, all these media. But again, if you create them because you have made any some research, it's okay. If you take them from a report uh, or you, you you take the data from a database from Eurostat, for example, you should declare the link where you have taken this. Or if there is a photo, then you should cite where you have found this photo because maybe uh, there is a copyright and you have to respect the copyright. Okay, so this is very, 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 very important. You, you could use all of them. Uh, and of course, uh, if if uh, you keep notes when writing uh, an article, then you you will have all the necessary information, and you won't get lost. So just be careful to take notes uh, and uh, write at the same time. Um, well, that's great if you can create an infographic. If the infographic is, you, you, you should declare that this, you created this. In, if an info, infographic is based on data that you have collected, for example, uh, you should write down that this is based on data from, let's say, OECD. But you have created the infographic. Um, if it's not, it's something uh, yours, it's okay. It's yours, so you won't cite anything. But it, if the infographic uses data, you should write down that this is created by the author based on 
Eurostat data based on ILO data. Okay, if it uses that. Um, so uh, again, don't forget to put all these uh, references to add all of these references and to keep uh, track of, of uh, these uh, references in a notebook. And when you are finalizing your first draft, uh, you should go and evaluate and improve your manuscript. You don't write it and that's, that's it again. Uh, you write it and then you, you send it. It's not that. You should re revise it and improve it and again and again, read it again. So first of all, when you finish, take a break. This will help you be fresh. Then you read it carefully. You read the draft carefully and you find any mistakes, any misinterpretations, any, any problems it has, uh, or it needs a further uh, analysis and specific issues. Then you check the structure, if it's well structured or if anything is not well connected or is missing. Then you revise the draft. You may discuss it with your colleagues or you may give it to your colleagues to some of, or to one of your colleagues to read it just to give you his opinion or her opinion. And then you proofread it, edit it. If there is any other change that you want you to make, and you finalize it. So this means that you, you read it one, two, three, four, five times again. So it's not just I write it down, I read it again, and it's over. You have to review it carefully in order to finalize it well. Uh, well, that's it. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your attention. Uh, and now, if there are any questions, any reflections, uh, please, uh, I'm here to answer to your questions. How long? Ah, oh, okay. Uh, how long the meeting in general? Uh, I think uh, Alkinos has made the uh, program. Uh, I have finished my presentation. Then we have a break, and then uh, you will be with for an hour uh, more with Alkinos to create the groups. Yes, but uh, don't worry, Anna. Uh, today's discussion that we that you will miss uh, will continue tomorrow. So any questions, etc., will be answered. You can questions. Oh, we have more questions. Well, um, well if we uh, use this language, uh, Elena, uh, yeah, we have to be very, very careful. Uh, uh, let me say. Uh, if you have questions and you write them in the chat, uh, write to everyone, not uh, only to Stelio, so we can... Oh, uh, yes. To... Oh, it's only to me. Okay, okay, sorry. Uh, okay, let me clarify a few things. If you want to talk, any questions you have, please. Just uh, talk, okay. Um, now, we ha I have here some questions. The roadmap interested. What should we do in order to make the roadmap uh, section more interesting? Uh, where? Well, uh, there you should clarify which are the parts, the main parts of the paper uh, that they face it. If you want to make an infographic, for example, you can do it. <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's up to you to make it more interested, interesting if you want. Um, but you should include the main parts and the main arguments in order to be more interesting sometimes it is important just to make a question in the end or just to say that the, the main recommendation is that and we will analyze it further so just to to make the uh, um the reader be more attracted to 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 that um now about um, subsequent parts yes the parts should be connected with each other and should be connected with the main aim of the paper so uh, they 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 should not be uh, so different in terms of the general connection so they they should be connected for example i have uh they have given to me a paper which is 
about uh, uh, research they have done in, in the school, in, in the primary school students. Before that, there, is, there was a section about the alternative, way, alternative ways of uh, teaching. This ha has not to do anything to do with the part of the research. The part of the research was about bullying and about something uh, like that. So the different parts should be connected. Um, maybe they are different, but you should show the connection they have why they are important and which is exactly the connection they have. Um, when should we should you stop? <laughs> if if uh, your, your topic is still ongoing, uh, if there is an ongoing issue, you stop in the day that you have finalized the main arguments and you want to publish it. Uh, and you say that up to date, which is uh, the specific date, these things has had happened. So uh, then you declare that this is uh, up to, let's say, uh, April 2023. So that's it. If the some some things are ongoing, still ongoing and ongoing, ongoing. So you you will analyze this thing up to now. If you want to follow up with another policy brief in the future, you can do it. And you you will be based on the first uh, paper. So especially in social sciences, uh, in every science, uh, issues are ongoing. Uh, so you should declare when you are writing this. Now, up to now, up to what? May, April 2023, for example. Um, and about the language, you should be very careful. Um, in some extent, maybe you use, uh, maybe it's useful, the, uh, the jargon uh, language, but you should be very careful uh, using it, uh, uh, generally with uh, your language. What I mean careful, just be careful, the, the reviewer and the reader to understand what you are saying. Uh, this is it not uh, uh, that that everything can be accepted if it is justified and if it is clear and uh, well uh, written but you should be careful on on, on that um okay anna bye bye um you will have everything uh, 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 all the information uh, you will receive it uh so yeah any other questions? Yes, please. Well, Stelio, thank you for your reply. Um, actually, please allow me an extra question. Uh, well, actually, maybe I need to clarify something regard regarding my third question. Uh, when I refer uh, lopsided and different subsequent parts, of course, in the same article, when we do have the backbone, for example, discussion, uh, methodology, limitations, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, what should we do if uh, the subsequent parts, such as discussion and methodology, are lopsided? This is the question, and I hope now it's more clear than, uh, than before. Thank you. Again, again, you should be careful to keep... Uh... Uh, all the, the 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 guidelines. I mean, uh, what do you do? You, you remember I said that uh, you should be you should synthesize your your text. So uh, you have limitations here in the policy brief. If 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 you have you want to do an extend extens, uh, uh, extensive paper, for example, a research paper that you cannot use all of these in the policy brief, then, okay, you, you should publish a paper like that with 10,000 words, including all the parts. If there is a policy brief, you should be uh, concise. You should include it concisely. If this cannot happen, then you should um, choose to publish a research paper. A research paper is a paper more than 
uh, five, six uh, thousand words and up to 10 uh, thousand words. So there you could include uh, more things and uh, you could include everything that you want or you have found. But in the policy brief, uh, it, is, it is important to keep the guidelines, th these guidelines, it's a brief, a, a, a brief statement of, of all of these. So you need to be careful of, of, of that uh, in the policy brief. If you cannot do it like a policy brief, then you go to the next step. You know, some, some uh, journals have different kinds of papers. For example, they have um, the, 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 the short paper, which is like a, a statement. They have the, the, um, the argument, and then they have the research paper, the original research paper, which is like 10,000 words or eight or whatever they have uh, in their guidelines. But then uh, you, I think that in that case, you should go to the next step. It's crystal clear now. Thank you, Stelio. You're welcome. Um, any other questions? No questions. I hope that you, you will uh, write uh, your policy briefs uh, uh, taking uh, into account these directions that uh, we have given to you now. And I, I hope that they will be helpful for you all.